Welcome to Broke Joe Builds. And um, well, today we're gonna start off, I guess, with the basics. And um, we're gonna talk about smaller Chevy cylinder heads. And when you try to make power, you wanna get the best cylinder head that you can afford. And when you broke, you gotta go with the best cylinder head that the factory most likely came out with, but that's what you could get at the junkyards. So this is an example right here of a Vortex cylinder head. It was a good score. If you see, it has brand new valve train. So it looks like uh, the cylinder head was maybe a rebuilt special because both cylinder heads look like they have, you know, uh, newer valve springs and the valves themselves, the valve stems look newer. The valve keepers look newer. So this is a, a good example of what you could find at the local wrecking yards and these set of cylinder heads you could probably get for less than two hundred dollars maybe even cheaper and depending on where you're located a uh, set of these cylinder heads you could probably come out with a set of pair for 25 bucks each so for 50 bucks you could come out with a pair of vortex heads and there's plenty of potential so we're going to start off with a quick series and we will eventually put these cylinder heads on a motor that you probably can see in the background that will be going in my Buick Regal that will be uh, a daily driver so this won't be uh, uh, this is not going to be a crazy build but in a future episode we're going to have a 355 that we're going to build to try to make over 500 horse and we're going to try to do that as cheaply as possible and eventually hopefully we see that engine in an S10 that we're going to put together that the whole car is going to be built on the cheap so the whole point of the, the series and the whole point of this channel is to build with as little as what we have and um, what little that you may have and do your best, right? So this is an example of what you may have on your vehicle already. This is a, uh, I, I believe is a, uh, this is a one, two sits casting. It's a pretty much a garbage casting, right? If one two sits, eight eight twos, they're not your. Uh, they're a thin wall casting. They have a big chamber, so I mean, this is pretty much you're gonna get for a cylinder head from your smog era through your 80s pickups, and then they came with swirl port heads. If you have a swirl port head, just take that head. And, um, and you try to use it for performance use, just grab the head now and just throw it in the dumpster. Um, this head will be better for that application than to deal with a swirl port head. And then also try to find an intake manifold to fit the application. It's, it's not worth it. Um, again, if we just look at the intake ports, let's start, let's start with there. All right, well first, I said chambers, right? You see a 76cc chamber? and the chambers are a little bit smaller here with the the factory vortex head the valve size should be about the same this should be a 194 194 150 150 exhaust package but um in a little bit we'll pull the valves out and you can see the difference and just the way the valves are packaged from the factory even the valves on on these vortex are a little bit better than what you will find on your standard, you know, small block Chevy casting. So again, we have a smaller chamber. So if you have a smaller chamber, you have more compression. And I know personally from circuit track guys that deck these heads to like extremes. So there's some meat to go with on a Vortec head. Now the feather castings are a little bit thin. Um, they're not the, the hardiest of castings, but they are proven. And if you have a good pair that's not cracked, you'll be able to definitely get some use out of it and make some good horsepower. Now, with this cylinder head, you can port it. You can make some power with a pop-up piston. Uh, we got some goop on it. You can make some power with a pop-up piston, but like you're 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 fighting against yourself here because when you look at the intake port, right? In comparison, now I even if you have a pair of camel humps, you could definitely a, a set of vortex would be an upgrade. Even the phase three bow tie heads that came out in 
the late 80s and people were going crazy for them and they spent hours porting them and they could make some flow numbers out of them but with very little work you make a vortex head pretty much outshine that and I mean on a vortex head you could open up the valve package to a 205 160 uh, I don't recommend going that big I think a 202 one, 160 package will work and for this application I'm staying with the 194 and 150 valve and it's gonna flow more than plenty for in this application maybe 370 horse it's gonna have a 218 uh at 50 cam uh it's gonna be very streetable but like i said we're gonna have a more radical build later on um we look at the exhaust ports right even on the exhaust ports you can see well, to be honest with you, the exhaust side and the Vortex are not known to be a strong suit, but they are, they do flow a tad bit better than a factory standard small block Chevy. Another thing to note, where many people, uh, I just got picked up a cylinder set of cylinder heads where someone made the same mistake, is they use different spark plugs. The depth on the spark plug, uh, probably hard to see, is shallow on a standard small block Chevy. So if you get, you know, a R45 plug, let's say, uh, or, you're, you know, you could get a, those SL shorty plugs. And if you try using those plugs on a Vortec head, the car is going to run, run lousy because the shorty plug won't reach into the chamber. The, 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 valve, uh, the spark plug will come in and just barely crest inside the chamber and it's gonna pop, it's gonna act like you have a flat, uh, a flat spot on your cam. You think you're gonna have uh, uh, a more major issue than it really is. And it's just as simple as using the right spark plug. So make sure uh, you use a, a, the proper spark plug, which would be a 750, a three quarter inch reach plug with a Vortec head. Um, but you can also see, it's gonna be hard to see right away, but if you take a good look, the spark plug placement also on the Vortec is deeper and pointed more towards the exhaust valve and the chamber. While a, your standard small lock Chevy, you see where the spark plug placement is, right? It's, it's, uh, let me see if we can even up the view. The spark plug placement uh, is more in the middle on your standard small block Chevy head. And your vortex head is a little bit closer to the exhaust valve. By doing that, it creates a swirl effect and a, a vortex and creates more power. So this same chamber design has been copied from, you know, pretty much every aluminum cylinder head has copied this chamber design and it's for a good reason. They simply work. So let me get my uh, valve spring compressor out here and we're just gonna pull some valves out and we'll see the difference in the chambers. Good thing to do though, when especially if you're gonna try to reuse as much stuff as you can, mark everything. So, this will be for me, cylinder head one. Of course. Uh oh, we have technical difficulties. RP. Um, we're going to mark this head as cylinder head one. And then from the mark, I would just like to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously, you guys know how to count. Seven. You see that we have some carbon buildup here. And eight. So, I'll disassemble this head because we're going to rebuild these heads from scratch. And um, it's good to have everything in line. And then for the, uh, this other cylinder head, this other work tech head, so I don't mix up from side to side and I don't have to make sure I have everything together. I'll letter this side, so we'll go A, so A, 
and then go down. You guys know your alphabets, I hope. If not, you probably shouldn't be putting them ending together. Well, we dropped a retainer, but we're not going to be using them, and we'll show you why in a future episode. But, we see that these cylinder heads had brand new seals, so that's a good deal for, for us. But, um, we're going to pop, again, this is a junk head, you don't have to do this with your head. Now, proper practice, and if you did care about the cylinder head, you'll run a file or the edge, and you'll break the uh, edge that you would get from running the vehicle before pulling it out. That's a good way to scratch and ruin the guide. So, as we can see, um, if we try to use this, this cylinder head, we would have had some sealing issues with the carbon that we had built up. At least, at minimum, this would have needed most likely a, 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 a valve lapping and honestly, most likely a valve job. This cylinder head here, so we got the intake and exhaust valve here. And we'll bring that up to the camera real soon. And we'll pull these two valves out. Now, you can't tell by looking in the camera here, but this valve, in comparison to this valve, is actually back cut right from the factory. So this is your standard small block Chevy valve. This is what you would have on anything pre-Vortec will be a valve like this but it's hard to tell because there's a lot of carbon buildup um if i was to wire brush this you'll see that right from the factory this valve is actually back cut and will provide better flow than what this valve will produce Th this is pretty much what you would get on an at-the-market valve right from the factory on this exhaust valve you could tell that this wasn't really burning that good. It was running, it looked like a little lean. It had some pre ignition for sure. Um, compared to this, this valve, again, weight. In your hand, you could feel the difference. But this valve as well has a little bit of a back cut that this valve does not. And we could actually improve on that later on um, on using these same factory valves so we'll keep these two valves together now what really you, you where you could really tell the difference and let me see if i could bring out my cell phone here it is right in the ports So we'll shine a light. 
if you could see inside this this port it's a fairly large port and the runner is actually very straight I don't know if you can see that in this camera angle but uh, we'll get better angles after we sandblast them uh, glass bead them in the, in the cabinet and um, you could see that the port is actually fairly straight and it's fairly big now we compare that to this small lock Chevy head um, unfortunately the angle the dangle here is not the best so let's slide some things over slide these locks over keep these together So, I shine this light. One, you see the major push rod restriction you have on this head right out of the factory. But if we went from this way, and just maybe from this angle, you might be able to see the port is more restricted, not as straight, and even where the push rod comes through, um, the push rod, the, the valve will come through doesn't have the same taper and it's not as smooth as a transition as a Vortec head will provide. This Vortec head right here, I mean if you could just see that in the in the video there, you can see how the actual there's actual transition for where the valve flows. So when the the air and fuel is mixing and coming around the valve it will create a nice swirl effect as it's coming out and into the chamber coming out this way towards towards the exhaust side towards the valve uh, towards the, the spark plug and igniting and creating your combu combustion process this cylinder head has tons of potential and you can make a lot of power on the low and again here I broke Joe's uh, builds that's what we're about. We're about building as much power with as little money as you ha can and also, you know, having fun. This is a hobby and when you could do things with your hands and not having to pay someone to do it, you are literally, you get self-gratification, right? Like, I did this with my hands and two, when you build it yourself, you know it right you know you know your engine you know your combination because you were able to put it together yourself and um you could easily do a set of vortex and on on a budget and outrun a good set of aluminum cylinder heads now if you work over a set of aluminum cylinder heads can you make more power than you can with a vortex head absolutely but when we're talking about the total amount of money that you're going to be spending, you can do this on the cheap. You know, a good set of uh, cheap aluminum cylinder heads now. You could get them actually cheaper now for a smaller Chevy than you can in the past, you, about $1,000. But we're going to look to build this cylinder head all in for, I don't know, 200 bucks, And that's including buying a set of cylinder heads. So about 200, 250 bucks, if you include the retainers that we're going to be using. You can have a cylinder head that can compete with good at the market casting. So again, we'll end this video now. And uh, part two, we'll glass be the cylinder head. And the cylinder head is going to be all taken apart. They're all going to, both going to be taken apart. We're going to glass beat them. And then part three, we'll do some porting. And part four, we'll do some other little tips and tricks to have a nice little cylinder head that we can uh, put in our hot rod and, you know, show some people up. So take care and come, like, share, subscribe. I'm not that comfortable around the camera, but I will get better. I can promise you. But what I can guarantee you is that if you follow what we do here, you're going to make a lot more power.
enjoy.